So probably the easiest way to do this would be to use the Crimson 2.1 software. So we'll we'll look at how we'll look at how this how we are connected to this PXU panel meter. Um, so it's a PXU 31C20, and this one's 120 volt powered. You can see the 120 on the back, and you can see I have a zero to a 10 volt. Um, signal coming from just this distance sensor to simulate any kind of zero to 10 volt. And this is the, these are the RS-485 communications coming in. Uh, so we're able to configure it with Crimson 2.1. And this is just a uh, RS-485 USB on my computer to RS-485 communications. And this is what we'll be configuring it with. So that's kind of the setup. And Oops. I'm just set on the way. So I opened up the Crimson two point one. So you can see in the name up here, Crimson 2.1. My mouse is showing on there, Crimson 2.1. And uh, there are there's another, there's a Crimson 3 or 3.1 that's for graphite displays and things like that. This one is for panel meters uh, for this PXU and a lot of the other panel meters. So to get into this, um, the first thing you need to do is look at the, the settings. Uh, I printed the manual out for the PXU, and in here, oops, if it will focus, it's telling us in the RS-45 connections that has to be set to Modbus RTU, a baud rate of 38400, and an address of 247. So if we open Crimson and said new, we would go over here and select the correct one, PXU PID controllers, and come over this list. And it was a 31C20, I believe. So you just have to pick the one out of here that made sense. Uh, that one was PXU C PXU 31C20. So yeah, and then we come over here and choose look through this list. PXU 31C20 is going to be this guy. Uh, that one ends in a D, so it's going to be this one. And once this is open, you have to um, check your RS-45, the USB to RS-45. So you go to, you type in device manager, usually the best way to get to device manager on your computer. And you want to go down and look at these COM ports. And if I unplug this and replug it back in, you'll see... Uh, if I look at comms again, you can see the two that exist without it. And then when I plug this USB in, you'll notice that it added this USB to serial COM, and it's on COM port 2. What we're looking at is to make sure it's COM 2, that we know that it's on COM 2. And when we go in here to our link, uh, our 485, you would have to pick which COM port it's on. I think it's default on USB, but you have to say, you no, know, it's on COM 2. You would have to choose the right baud rate. Default for this one was 38400. We found out from the paperwork and the address was 247. We say OK. And we should be able to pull the program from there or send the program to it. So if I say extract, I'm going to pull the program out of the PXU. And if I say send, I'm going to send it over. So first, let's ex extract what's in there. And it'll tell us it's reading. And then we can go, we can save this as found. Now you have a copy of it. So if you, anything you change, you can always get back to this point. So if we want to look at, um, 
and look at the I.O. or the inputs and outputs. This is where you could go in and instead of having to go through the screen and set everything with the, the P and the D and the up and down arrows, you can make all the settings in here. So I've already done that. Uh, and once you make settings, any, anything you want to change, uh, you can just close the screen, go to the other uh, settings, anything I wanted to change in inputs, 0 to 10 if it were a 4 to 20 or 0 to 10, you can change that there, close it, and when you, after you make the change, you hit update, and it's going to, uh, I'm sorry, when you hit uh, link send, I think update also does it, but uh, it should send it over. And we can we can test that and just see. Um, so if I change one of these values, let's see if it changed it. So in inputs, if I'm saying it's, uh, if I want if this one is a four to twenty application, I close it and I hit uh, Shazam, as Joe Wazzy would say, hit the Shazam button. Um, that should update the uh, PXU with the current settings. So hit it, and now if I look in here. It's 4 to 20. If I want to change it back to 0 to 10, Shazam it. So making the changes much easier. And once you get one of them correct and you save this file, well, so say, say this was good, we're happy with the, with, if we want to mess with the PID settings, that's also in here. You can go in and change the PID settings. Uh, Say we tweaked them and we're happy with it. Then, you, then on the other models, you don't have to auto tune. You don't have to go tweak it. Just you connect to it, just like we did. And, uh, hit this button, the update button, and it would load all the settings to it. So that's the best way of doing it. And then can uh, show the customer how to do that, and they'll be able to do it in the future. So all they need is a USB to 45 converter, and uh, that the particular model I have there has the RS45 built into it. So we'll do the others and. Go from there. Thanks.